everyone! So we are here today to do our Spookathon TBR. We are very excited to be participating in Spookathon again this year. Yeah. We had so much fun last year. This time Crystal's joining us. Yes! yes. Did I not? Yeah, no, I didn't. Not, not last year. <laughs> You're in it this year though. It's one of the funnest readathons of the entire year. Yeah, and for sure. It, yeah. My favorite. <laughs> We've been looking forward to it like since the last one ended. Yeah. So I've been and, putting books aside for like a month, being mm -hmm. like, save it, <laughs> exactly. save it. Um, if you didn't know, the Spookathon is kind of a creepy October readathon, mm -hmm. and it's hosted by Books and Lala, and as well as co-hosted by Peter and Shannon. So we'll link to their channels below. And this this year, the readathon is from October fifteenth to the twenty first, so a full week to get in some spooky reads. Nice. Um, so there are five different challenges, um, so we're just going to go through what we're going to try to get to this week. Yeah! Cool. Alright, so first up, the challenge they always have is read a thriller. Yes. So, uh, what's your thriller, Chris? So, my thriller is brand spanking new, and that's This Body's Not Big Enough for Both of Us by <laughs> Edgar Cantero. Um, I read Meddling Kids last year, and I have his other book, but, which I haven't started yet, but this just came out, and I wanted to pick it up, and it's a thriller about... <laughs> It kind of feels like a private eye film noir kind mm, of detective, but nice. he and his twin sister are trapped in the same body. So they're sometimes they're one person and sometimes they're another person. Oh, crazy. And I think they're taking on like mob boss kind of guys. <laughs> and the notorious Aze Kimrian must race the sin-soaked palm tree lined streets of San Carnal to infiltrate the drug cartel, catch an impossibly bold assassin, and while they're at it, rescue an undercover cop in too deep. Whoa. <laughs> so this is the same author, but not within the same series as Meddling Kid? Yeah, just the same author. Okay, because yeah. when I saw the cover, I was like... Yeah, his covers are really cool. The sort of graphic feel um, to it. I think it's his third English novel, but oh, he's cool. also written some in Spanish, if I'm not mistaken. Awesome. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was excited to get my hands on this, but I was disappointed. It's a baby hardcover. It's an inch shorter than his yeah. other two. Shelving hate nightmare. When <laughs> hate Shelving when that happens. <laughs> All right, Sally, what's up? On so the thriller list? I have was courtesy of Corey because I was away this weekend <laughs> and didn't have time to actually get my hands on a lot of books. I was originally going to do the new uh, Robert Galbraith, but then I figured Aww. within the time constraints, <laughs> that was probably not the best idea. <laughs> so thank you very much, Corey, for bringing this to work. It's Ooh. I See You by Claire McIntosh. Um, I actually had this one on my Goodreads mm, list good. from a, a blog. I read about it uh, a while ago. But uh, yes, a woman named Zoe Walker sees uh, a photo of herself in the newspaper um, with the website findtheone.com. She has no idea why. And then... That doesn't sound ominous at all. No, not at all. <laughs> and then like a new woman is featured with this in this bizarre ad every day and a series of uh, vicious uh, acts <laughs> seem to be happening to all of these women. So we have to get to the bottom of right. what the hell is going on. Um, yeah, I'm really That's glad very, you brought this one because uh, I think I, I love I love a gritty thriller. So fingers <laughs> crossed on that one. I read um, her. I don't know if it was her debut, but her other book, I Let You Go, uh, in 2017, and I really enjoyed it. Cool. And it, I like could not figure out the plot to us. <laughs> uh, so did it all come together? In it the all end? came together in ways that I was like, oh no, what is happening? Okay. So. I want to read that one too, but this one, this is a book I've had on my TBR and was on this TBR last year, <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't end up reading it. I ended up reading In a Dark Dark Wood by the same, right. which is another novel by Ruth Ware, but I still have this book, and that is The Woman in Cabin 10. I still really don't know too much about what it's about, but it's set on a cruise ship. Right. It says in this tightly wound psychological thr thriller reminiscent of Agatha Christie's works. Nice. So I think that sounds pretty fun. I really enjoyed In a Dark Dark Wood, so that gives me high hopes for this one. I'm gonna do it this year, guys. You better. I've had this arc <laughs> for years, <laughs> which is not great. So is the one you me. read last year the one that's like a hen party in the woods or yeah. something? Okay. Yeah, yeah that one yeah. also sounded great. It is. And this one, I don't know about you, but cruise ships kind of terrify me. They're you just like, can't there's leave. nowhere to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and just like the, the 
size of them. Yeah. They're terrifying. Right? <laughs> so, yeah, I can understand that. Um, I don't know if I would find a cruise relaxing, and I may never after reading this book. <laughs> <laughs> so we shall see. But that's that's my first up. Cool. Nice. Um, and the second challenge is to read a book with purple on the cover. Okay. So, <laughs> here's my little twist. I tried really hard to find a copy of The Witches by mm. Roald Dahl. Purple. This copy. <laughs> but with it being the long weekend and library transfers, I could only find this edition. So I will still be reading The Witches, we'll pretend an edition it's of which has purple on <laughs> yes. the cover. Um, I've never read uh, The Witches by Roald Dahl before. I've had a lot of his books read to me in school mm -hmm. where teachers would like read aloud, but I've never actually read a Roald Dahl book myself. With the exception of the Twits, so which is super short and super strange and stuck with me, but um, my boyfriend says this movie scarred him for life. Oh, no. uh, so Have you seen the movie? I haven't, so I'm very much looking forward to reading this and following it up with a, cool. a spooky movie. Yeah. All right. Um, I... I believe there is a finished copy of this waiting for me at the post office right now, but right now I only have a bound manuscript. Um, and that is Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. This is a brand new middle grade. It just came out on September 25th, I believe. Um, I love that cover. It's mm -hmm. such a creepy cover. You got that like very spooky uh, scarecrow. Um, and I do a little bit of the synopsis here. I didn't even see that scarecrow. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like a creepy surrounded school bus full it's of children. Creepy. Um, do, do, do. After suffering a tragic loss, 11 year old Ollie only finds solace in books. So when she happens upon a crazed woman at the river threatening to throw a book into the water, Ollie doesn't think. She just acts, stealing the book and running away. Uh, as she begins to read the slender volume, Ollie discovers a chilling story about a girl <laughs> named Beth. Um, the two brothers who loved her and a pe peculiar deal with the smiling man, a sinister <laughs> specter who grants you, who grants your most tightly held wish, but only for the ultimate price. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, I've had my eye on this one for a while and I'm, I'm really, I hope that the, the finished copy gets here really soon. So they <laughs> hate reading read manuscripts. Um, but, uh, I, I love when you find a really good spooky metal grade. So I'm hoping this one lives up to as excited mm. as I am for I'm it. I'm noticing, Catherine Arden, I'm mm -hmm. like, that name sounds familiar. She's quite popular in the booktube community right now because she wrote The Bear and the Nightingale, yeah. which oh. is a really, quite a popular adult fantasy novel. Mm -hmm. So that's very interesting. Yes. Apparently she's well, a great writer. I'll share it with you when it arrives. <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> All right, so my purple book is also the group pick. So yes. every year for Spookathon, they have a group pick. What was it called last year? <laughs> Um, None of us liked A Stranger it. in the House. A Stranger in the House. Yes. Yeah. By Sherry Lupina, which we all read and various degrees of dislike. <laughs> <laughs> but this year we have a very, very different kind of novel. I'm very excited Not a novel, anthology. And that is Toil and Trouble, which is edited by Jessica Spots with Intest Sharp. And this is 15 short stories about witches. Mm. Um, this just came out. I'm very excited. All of the lower mainland only had two copies. Ugh. <laughs> so Karina managed to get her hand on one and I have another one. <laughs> so <Well done. laughs> I don't know why. Chapters just doesn't have this book. Huh. Um so I shouldn't say that. Independent bookstores might have had it. Yes. Check out your independent bookstore. <laughs> um but yeah, and this just sounds I find anthologies can be hit and miss. Yes. But the last YA anthology I read, I really liked. So I'm having a good mood for this. And there's 15 stories in here. So you can kind of split it up to read a couple a day. Is it specifically YA, this one? Or this, is it? I believe it is specifically it is. YA. Okay. Um, all of these are YA authors anyways. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, and it was in the YA section. Okay. <laughs> Good indicator. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm very excited. All written by women, all about witches. Awesome. I love that cover. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's really beautiful. Jessica Spots would, um, edits quite a few different anthologies and they all kind of match with this like cool oh, nice. typography. Neat. Yes, yes. All right. So challenge number three is not set during the current time period. Um, for me, that is a book I've been wanting to read for a while and that's Gwendy's Button Box by Stephen King and Richard Chimzar? Chismar? Um, this is just one of their novellas. It's set in 1974 and there's in Castle Rock. 
Ah. And so Gwendy, there's this bluff in Castle Rock called Castle View. And there's three ways to get there. You could take one street, you could take another, or you could take these really creepy rusted out stairs that are against the rock called the suicide stairs. And so every day in the summer, she walks up there and one day she, she meets a man and it says, one day a stranger calls to Gwendy, hey girl, come over here for a bit. We ought to palaver you and me. On a bench in the shades, it's a man in black jeans, a black suit coat, and a white shirt unbuttoned at the top. On his head is a small, neat black hat. The time will come when Gwendy has nightmares about that hat. Ooh. So <laughs> she goes up to this creepy location every day, and one day there's just a creepy man waiting to talk to her. So, Ooh. <laughs> oh boy. That sounds terrifying. Yeah. I've never even, I've been kind of getting more into Stephen King, or trying to read more of his books, and I've never even heard of that one. No, so let me know how it goes. I will. Okay. What about you, right, Sally? Um, set in a different time period. That is another middle grade one for me, Lockwood and Co. Mm -hmm. um, this is the first of the series. Uh, it came out in 2014, so I don't know how many are in this series. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna guess three safe guess. <laughs> um, so this is Lockwood & Co. The Screaming Staircase. Um, and I'm pretty sure that this one takes place in like old timey times. <laughs> right. Um, just based on the language in the first chapter that I scan through. So I'm kind of cheating on this challenge, but I'm pretty, pretty sure. Old timey. Old timey times. <laughs> Very in, in England. Yeah. So I will I'll do better at telling you what it's, <laughs> when it actually takes place. Um, but yeah, I've heard great things mm -hmm. about this, and it's it sounds quite spooky. And it's blurbed by Rick Riordan, which... Indeed it is. If you, if you ever have a middle grade book blurbed by Rick Riordan, you're doing good things. Yes. <laughs> Stroud is a genius at inventing an utterly believable world that is very much like ours, but so creepily different. Mm. Rick Riordan. So there you go. I really don't know much about that other than... I've seen it around. I've seen it around a lot. Yeah. We'll see. Because he wrote the Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus, that's yes. right. Bar yes. Bartimaeus? I think I would have said Bartimus. Bartimus, that makes more sense than Bartimaeus, but... But if you think of that, same yeah. up there. And I picked one. I'm not reading the entire anthology because there's probably 40 stories in here. Yeah. But I'm going to read the first 14. Cool. So that's two a day. Cool. So that is The Grimm's Fairy Tales. Classic. Okay. Um, I've never read Grimm's Fairy Tales, I believe. I've read some Hans Christian Andersen, mm -hmm. but I haven't read Grimm's. And these from what I know, are quite a bit darker yeah. than Anderson. Um, so I'm gonna read the first 14 stories. There are some like that I recognize the name of, like the Goose Girl and Rapunzel and Hansel and Gretel. And yeah, there's a whole Tom Thumb, Rebel Stiltskin. Oh wow. So there's all sorts of stories in here. I'm gonna read, I don't know if I'll read the first 14, but I'll read 14 of them. Okay. So I can read two a day, because some of them are quite short, like a few pages long, right. so. And I'd like to get through this. And this is definitely not set during the current time period. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's mine. Awesome. All right. And then challenge number four is to read a book with a spooky word in the title. So I wanted to keep things realistic. <laughs> so I've doubled up on some of my challenges. Mm -hmm. So I'm going with the witches. Excellent. Yes. Good choice. That's my choice. I'm also going to double up for this <laughs> challenge. And uh, same as my last pick, Screaming Staircase. Screaming. Screaming. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm not doubling up. And this isn't actually the one I'm reading, but I'm going to finish Death Note. Cool. I have two more volumes to read. Um, and I have like an all in one edition at home, Ooh. which is very large. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <that's funny. laughs> um, so I'm going to read the f uh, last two volumes. I've been sitting on this almost since last year for the last two volumes. I don't right. know why. Um, I'm excited to finish it off and then maybe watch the anime. Okay. Mm -hmm. It looks very scary. And death. So creepy word. <laughs> when you started reading that last year, I read the first volume mm. and then I watched the first episode of the anime and I was like, nice. But I haven't <laughs> gone further in either manga or episodes. But. We'll say thus far, this volume, which is actually volumes one and two in these editions, um, is the best. Mm. Okay. But I am excited to see where how it ends. How many volumes total? Oh gosh, 10? No, 12. So there's six of these, but there's okay. 12 like individual gotcha. mangoes. Gotcha. Yeah. I believe. All right. Um, okay, and the final challenge, so there's just five challenges, is to read a book with pictures. Yes. 
two of my books have pictures. <laughs> so obviously, uh, which is, is illustrated by Quentin Blake. So there's lots of sketches throughout there. And Wendy's button box is actually mm. has some illustrations in it, depending on uh, some kids flying aw. a kite that look way down at the bottom. And so I think I saw a creepy skull somewhere. Great. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, scary dude with a knife. I mean, I don't know. Actually, you know what's but, interesting? I'm currently reading The Shining, and in The Shining there are illustrations. Really? Oh, interesting. Not the, sorry, not The Shining. The Stand. The stand. Yeah, oh yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But there are huh. like every once in a while a weird creepy picture. Ooh, it's like Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> That's the move. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And yours? And me. I was going to borrow a graphic oh, novel yeah. from you, which I may still spell, do. Spell on wheels. Spell a great on wheels. choice. Um, but I was also digging through Karina's bookshelf mm -hmm. and found Coraline, which I have never read. Um, this one could potentially also double up for a purple cover, although mm -hmm. I'm definitely planning on reading Small Spaces first. Um, but uh, yeah, Chris Riddle uh, has all kinds of illustrations in here. To ask Karina, if she'll let me borrow this nice copy. But um, <laughs> but yeah, Coraline, I can't believe I've never read it. So it's this seems so like the it's, perfect time to, to oh, jump in. It's chilly. Yeah. It's, <laughs> oof. <laughs> this is like the scariest. Oh my God, that back. I know. Like, oh, she's terrified. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm very excited for, to to finally get through that one. Um, and again, for me, I'm going with Death Note. Definitely illustrate. <laughs> what a double up. A double up. I plus still have four more books that she's four. Yeah. <laughs> um, now I don't know about you guys, but I actually I try to read seven books for every read as long because okay. that's just how we do. <laughs> um. So I have two more I want to get to. Did you have any more you want to um, try to get to? Yeah, I think Wendy's Button Box and The Witches are both really short, <laughs> and I think I'm really going to enjoy Edgar Cantero again, so I might burn through it. So, to keep with the creep, <laughs> uh, I might revisit Nosferatu mm -hmm. by Joe Hill, which I mentioned in a previous video, and I also started last year, but I just kind of got busy and it was yeah. so creepy. I was happy to just leave it aside. <laughs> it sounds way too so, scary for me. I think I'm gonna revisit it if I finish my first three books. Cool, sounds yeah. Good. Um, I don't have any in front of me, but I do, I would like to kind of peruse some spooky book lists and see mm -hmm. if there's, cause, cause we were talking last week yeah. about finding like a truly scary <laughs> book to read, Yeah. Um, which I, I haven't totally done here, so no. I might throw something else into the mix. We'll see. We'll see. Um, and the other two I want to get to, because I think that this one will probably creep me out, um, and that is Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. Mm -hmm. Gillian Flynn. Um, I just so happened to find a copy for 25 cents at my library, what? and I was like, well, it's a sign. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not that long. No, you're going to get through that so fast. So I think I'll get through this one. And then I also... A book I'm borrowing from Crystal. I really want to read Battle Royale. Um, this is one that's been on my list for probably a decade. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I have an audiobook of this one. Cool. So, Interesting. Um, I always need to have an audiobook on the go. So I have an audiobook of this one. So I think it'll be, and I think it's pretty long. Okay. So hopefully it'll get me through some of the week. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll listen to a scary book. Yeah. And like freak myself out. Yeah, right. There'll <laughs> be no sleeping. Yeah. No sleeping, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I did find that then. to be a really fast read, though. Mm -hmm. So even if you skip between audio and yeah. physical, I'm sure you can breeze through it pretty quickly. And that's the sort of predecessor to uh, Hunger Games one that you were talking about? Or you were talking about? Yeah, like... I, I read it around the same time. Mm -hmm. It's a dystopian story where a school a uh, class of Japanese kids are sent to an island and right they have here's to your weapons and off you go oh, similar premise yes, yes. Um, okay yeah super excited yeah I hope you enjoy that I made some bold choices did. here guys did. <laughs> it's gonna be a busy well I feel like I'm week. reading a bunch of really short books and yeah one that looks really funny but That's fine so if I get to Nasaraju it'll be I'll be punished for okay. my easy there choices. You go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So that is our TBR list for the 2018 Spookathon. If you do want to check out um, Lala's video that explains the whole thing, mm -hmm. we'll leave a link to that below. Uh, we would love to know what you plan to read. Um, yeah, you, if you can, if you can find one book that encompasses all the different challenges, that's totally fine. Oh, you yeah. don't have to do all of them. Just read something spooky and get in on the fun. Yeah. Um, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe for more videos. Happy reading, and thanks for being awesome. Bye! Bye.